All right, everyone. So in this video, we're going to have a look at a new hot air rework station. Well, it's new to me anyway. Uh, I've been using a Kalip 8586 station uh, for uh, about two and a half years now. It's a two in one thing uh, with a soldering iron and a hot air uh, gun. And it's served me very well indeed. I've got no complaints about it whatsoever, but I've started to move into working on uh, MacBooks um, and Windows uh, laptops. Uh, the Windows laptops, not so bad. I've been able to uh, work on them with the uh, Kalip hot air station. Uh, I think the hot air is about 750 watts. The fan, of course, is in the handset, uh, which um, is a bit problematic because when you try to work on a a board with a lot of uh, uh, thermal mass, like a, like a MacBook Logic board, which absorbs a tremendous amount of heat. Uh, it's it's a complete waste of time trying to use this uh, cheap hot air. Uh, aiming the uh, hot air point blank range on a chip and you, and you can't really do anything with it. So what I was going to do was buy a quick 861DW uh, hot air rework station. Uh, as advertised and uh, endorsed and sold indeed, resold by Lewis Rossman in his online shop. Uh, Lewis actually did a, a, a comparison uh, of the Quick and uh, a Hakko station costing uh, $500 more and the Quick kind of one hands down. And he also sent one to Dave Jones who you'll know from EV blog and uh, Dave uh, tested the thing and did a tear down. Uh, but while I was looking at uh, for a UK supplier of the Quick uh, station, uh, and they were coming in at about two hundred and forty uh, pounds, uh, I happened to stumble on this uh, Best eight six three BST eight six three device, which looked remarkably uh, like the Quick. It's got the same uh, handle, the same the same handset, uh, same base unit more or less. But this one's got kind of a uh, a touchscreen LED on the front which I wasn't too keen on at first, but it was £70 cheaper than the Quick, and it looked like it came out of the same factory, and it's actually a little bit more powerful. This one does uh, 1,200 watts, uh, as opposed to the Quick 861DW, which does 1,000. So, uh, but this thing, I didn't much like the colour of it, the, the green casing and stuff, and I realised that I could use the difference in, in money that I would save by buying the best, and use it on something else, and I've actually ordered a uh, a new soldering iron uh, with the money I saved by buying this one, but I received this one yesterday. Uh, I haven't even opened the box yet because I knew I wanted to uh, video it. Um, so why don't we have a look at inside the box and see what we've got. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've already cut the box open. Uh, obviously I checked the contents uh, briefly when I uh, received it. Um, I did get uh, from this seller, this out of the way. I did get some rather nice um, I've got some, some wine vouchers here, if we can see them, if I just adjust the camera a little bit. Uh, very nice. And what we'll do with them. Uh, but it's quite well packaged anyway, so the sooner you get this big box out of the way, then we actually see what we're doing. We've got a business card from Replace Base, I bought the thing. Uh, manual, here we are. We'll put that to one side and get the contents of the box out. As you can see, it's it's rather well packaged in all this sort of form business here. So let's see if we can get the stuff out. We've got a IEC cable. Uh, we've got ESD strap. Let's see if we can lift this thing out of here without destroying the hose. Oh God. There we go. Right. Get this box out of the way a little bit. And there we are. So we've got the base unit here, um, which is very solidly constructed, um, solid metal. And that has the uh, removal tool, so you can take the nozzles off the uh, handle quite easily when it's still hot. Uh, this box is obviously the box containing the nozzle. I think you get three nozzles with the device. There we are. So we've got a. You get the bent nozzle with it? No, you don't. 
You can get an angled nozzle for these things, which are probably rather handy, but uh, anyway, big three straight nozzles. Uh, looks like something like four millimeter, six millimeter, and maybe eight millimeter. So, as I said, it's green. Percy, it's green. Well, I'm sure I'll get over the colour uh, soon enough. A nice silicon hose here, by the way, which is uh, it's nice and soft and light, so it shouldn't be too cumbersome to work with. So I made a complete arse of opening this thing. Jesus Christ. It's like this when I try and Christmas wrap presents, but in reverse. I have no aptitude for this whatsoever. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There I'm going to tear the bag open. There we go. Uh, well, there we have actually looked pretty smart once you get the bag off. So, the uh, handset just pops in here like so, in the holster there. We've got the LCD display on the front, power switch, uh, three preset channels. Uh, so really the presence of uh, having to use a, uh, a touch screen to actually set the temps in the first place in the airflow isn't really a big deal because you'll probably just go for the presets. We've got something that the Quick, uh, I don't think, has is the uh, REC connector. I think the Quick has the cable going straight in the back, so that's a nice touch. And the uh, ESD. Uh, jack. So, we might as well just plug it in and see how we go. Let's switch it on. My god, that beeps loud. Jesus Christ. So it's in standby mode. Uh, so we can't adjust the heat or the airflow when it's in standby mode. It has to be off the holster. I don't know if you can even hear me with this thing going. Uh, I'll try and get it more out of the way of the mic. So where are we here? So, that's temperature, 300 degrees C. Fahrenheit and centigrade. So, so we press set to set the temperature, so we'll go up to say 400. set again and that's our airflow which is litres per second and it feels pretty powerful I have to say uh, so I suppose what we should do is try and take something off the board so when you put it back in the cradle the temperature drops down and it runs the pump on the fan at the maximum to cool the element down and then I guess it will put itself to sleep. And there we go, so it's put itself in sleep mode and then as soon as you pull the thing off the cradle uh, it wakes itself up and it gets the temperature extremely quickly, I have to say. So I've got an old uh, laptop PCB here and uh, believe me uh, Never mind about the uh, chipset, uh, even a small uh, surface mount IC like this one here uh, would present problems for the old Calip over here. So what I'm going to try and do is take this off using the new uh, station and see how we get on. Okay, so the viewing angle isn't exactly optimal here because I don't have a microscope rigged up, but uh, let's just see what we can do here. Uh, so we're going to set the temperature, and I'm going to go up to 400, okay, airflow on max, and let's have a go. Savage, I'll use a bear to you.
Okay, so that's off the board. And that is fairly impressive. I think that took about a minute and a half or so. Uh, let's try one of these bigger components here. So it beeps when it gets up to temperature as well, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I'll have to look in the manual and see if we can turn that beeper off because it's extremely loud. So this is starting to go already. There we go, so that's off. Uh, this is um, night and day compared to the other station. It, it absolutely blows it away completely. I'm going to have no problems with this working on uh, MacBook boards. So uh, first impressions, <coughs> very, very good indeed. And of course we can use the tool here to take off the, I think, well supposedly, Alright, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I know this is anything but an extensive test, but believe me, or you might find it incredible, I would have had such a hard time just taking these components. There was a big chip there, and uh, this component here, which I removed, and that, it just took seconds, the second one, and uh, it's, uh, um, yeah, um, first impressions are extremely good. I think this is going to be well up to the task. So there you go, just a, a very quick look at the BST863 station, which is a good, or it looks to be a good, cheap alternative or cheaper alternative to the quick 861DW. Uh, this one was 170 quid all in from an eBay vendor in the UK with free shipping. Uh, came the next day uh, by FedEx. Very impressed so far. It's absolute night and day compared to the thing that's next to it here. Uh, if we look here, um, although the, the little Kalip has served me very, very well indeed. Um, but uh, yeah, no good if you want to be working on uh, MacBooks and uh, high thermal mass jobs. So yeah, on the face of it, this looks to be uh, a pretty good buy. And as I say, I used the change that I saved on buying this one uh, to get a new standalone iron as well, which I'll probably go through um when that one arrives but until then I'm looking forward to using this one and I've got a broken 13 inch MacBook here that's what finally made me pull the trigger on this thing because uh, I was trying to work on it with the, the Kalip and it was a complete not a waste of time couldn't even reflow a uh, CD32 15A uh, USB controller chip absolutely impossible so hopefully when I use this one and aim it at the MacBook board things are going to be great and uh, I'm going to save bags of time and uh, start fixing machines a lot more quickly. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, it was supposed it's actually run a little bit longer than I hoped it would. Um, but uh, as I say, Voltlog already did a pretty good review um, and a teardown on this uh, device. I'm not going to take it apart here. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, Hit the subscribe button and the bell so you see when new stuff comes out. And uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.